Hey, welcome to this week's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I am your host, Jen Liddy, and this is episode 151. This is my last episode before 2022. I'm going to take a break for two weeks. But all month in December, I've been wanting to leave you with um, examples and ideas to help you make content creation easier. That's why I call it Content Creation Made Easy. So I've been talking about how to give yourself permission to be on the channels and platforms and places that feel best to you, how to not try to convince your audience when they don't really need convincing or want convincing because nobody wants convincing. And today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into what to say in your content, because I find that people really struggle with this. Now I know, and you know that your audience has a lot to learn to achieve the result that they're looking for, whether they want to buy your product or your service, like there's a result or an experience that they want to have. And you are an expert in your field. There's really no denying that. And I don't care if you don't see it. We know that you're an expert. You're ahead of the people that you want to help. One of the things that might be holding you back in your content from showing up consistently is the overwhelm you feel by trying to teach everything that they need to know in your free nurturing content. And that is not possible. It's not reasonable for you. It's also really not possible for your people to learn everything. So I've always been saying, say less, say less, say less, so that you can show up more frequently and more consistently. But remember that the people who are on the content consumption journey with you, they can only handle a little bit of all that you have to teach. So one of the things I'm diving into today is thinking about the sophisticated, nuanced topics that you would talk about with clients. Those clients of yours, they've kind of They've already done the foundational stuff. Like that's out of the way for them. With your clients, you have a shorthand. You have a way that you speak. They they know you. They get you, they get the way you talk. You guys have already jumped in. They're down. They're further down the road with you. But there are things that your new to you audience is really not ready to hear or they don't understand. And a good example of what I'm talking about here is with like life coaches, for example. Now, life coaches help people attain a transformation of some sort, depending on what niche or audience they're working with, right? So with their long-term clients, they might have a shorthand that sounds like, okay, I'm going to hold space for you and we're going to process through this together. What choice would make you feel most empowered? Let's unpack this together. Let's download your thoughts so we can process them. That's the kind of thing you would hear in a life coaching session, right? And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. It's just that language that when somebody meets you for the first time in your content, it's it's not language that resonates with them. It might not mean anything for them. I remember a long, long time ago, my best friend and I used to talk about processing things. We were always like, okay, let's sit down and process this. And her husband would walk into the room and completely roll his eyes. He's like, what is this nonsense you guys are talking about? So sometimes when we're in the throes of our expertise, our language that we use every day becomes like breathing to us. And we forget that not everybody uses the same vocabulary. So this is an error that I see life coaches in particular making in their content, trying to speak to people um, in a way that doesn't resonate with them. They're, those, they're using like words that their audience might not even know what it means or it doesn't make sense, or they're certainly not Googling those words, right? So words like empowerment or transformation or inspiration, like those might not be the things that your audience is using when they first meet you. So let's talk about the what to say, because that's a really big sticking point for people that makes things harder. Are you using words that your audience uses in your free nurturing content? And are you meeting them right where they are when they Google their problem? Can they find you? Yes, you're an expert. Yes, you have a lot of training, but can people find you with the words and phrases and the tools and the approaches that they can handle right then and there in your free content. Remember, not everybody knows what these words mean. Like sometimes we get into our jargon, you know, like I might talk about, like I might throw things around like content pillars, content strategy, messaging. And when somebody meets me for the first time, they're like, I'm not really sure what that means. And so my job is to educate people. So when you are talking to your audience, what are you saying? And are is it resonating with your people? So the what to say problem is a real problem. You might be saying too much. 
you might not be saying the right things and you might not be saying things in a way they can hear that. So how can you overcome this problem? Well, let's just first get rid of the idea that deciding on a topic is hard. Topics are actually really easy because they're everywhere. Every call you have with a client, every social media you you uh, every social media post you see like there's probably something you can take away from there that sparks an idea for you. The questions that your clients ask or the questions that you see asked in Facebook groups that you are belonging to, or mistakes that you are seeing uh, companies or people just make out in the wild, uh, mistakes your friends are making, mistakes your, uh, your family is making, like it's all around you. I promise topics is not the problem. And if you think that it is, please just go back to what I said, just rewind 30 seconds and think about what are the questions? What are the comments? What are the mistakes? What are the errors? What do they need to learn? So let's wrap up with three things. Let's wrap up this series with three things you can do to make content creation more sustainable and easier so you don't burn out. Number one, I'm going to say it again, say less, give them bite-sized nuggets that they can chew on and think about like, does your, can your audience really handle like a 60 minute podcast? Can your audience really handle a seven page uh, blog post? Can they handle one of those long Instagram posts that they have to scroll and scroll and scroll on? You don't have to explain everything and solve every problem in one email, in one post, in one podcast, in one video. That's the first thing. Second, Meet them assuming that they are aware of the problem and curious about a solution. What do those people need to hear from you? Will there be some content you create for people who are at the beginning of the journey and unaware? Yes, but it's not where you're going to spend most of your time. I talked about that last week. Are there going to be posts that you make for people who are ready for a solution and ready to work with you? Yes, but in the middle is where people are really deciding a lot of things. And the third thing is use their words. What are people Googling about their problem? How do they describe their problem? I know you know what they need, but what do they think they want? That's where you have to meet them a lot of the time in your content. Use their words, their phrases, and they're going to think you're a freaking genius. So it's really important to avoid content burnout. Just remember that because you already know that it's a significant part of a marketing strategy. It's a way to nurture people and get them to develop a relationship with you. I mean, in today's world, people don't trust other people. They've been burned. They've been bullshitted, right? So bring your audience along with you in your nurturing content without fire hosing them or alienating them. Now, if you are struggling with content consistency, or you don't know how to do all this. If like it all makes sense to you, but you're just like, I don't know how. I need accountability. I need sustainability. That's literally what the content creator studio does. And every week I pull people along, a little bit of nuggets of information. Let's look at your content. Let me answer your questions. Let me hold the accountability space for you so that you can get some stuff done with ease. Join us over at content, um, sorry, genliddy.com forward slash studio, and you can join us. And if you are waiting until after the holidays, I totally understand. And that sounds like a great idea. I'd love to see you in there in January uh, for a handholding experience that helps you in a way that feels good for you. I want to wish you Happy holidays, happy new year. I hope you're also taking some time off so that you can rest and recover and feel ready for whatever's next for you next year. And use these three last weeks of content creation made easy to help you do it more sustainably and with less stress in your life. I'm always happy to hear from you. And if you could leave a review, that would be a gift you could give to me. I would be so happy to hear from you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your 2021. I'll see you in 2022, everybody. Bye.